Hello, everyone. Today we'll be heading to art by talking about an artist who was once a storekeeper and self-trained in many other talents, the French American artist John James Audubon, from the Dot and Culture section in Story of America cards. <laughs> John James Audubon, born as Jean-Jacques Rabin, was a French-American self-trained artist, naturalist, and ornithologist. His combined interest in art and ornithology turned into a plan to make a complete pictorial record of all the bird species of North America. He was notable for his extensive studies documenting all types of American birds and for his detailed illustrations, which depicted the birds in their natural habitats. His major work, a color palette book titled The Birds of America from 1827 to 1839, is considered one of the most finest ornithological works ever completed. He was a storekeeper, tutor, artist, portrait painter, and music teacher. But most of all, John James Audubon was a tireless student whose careful attention to detail earned him a place of honor among the world's naturalists. Although most people think of Audubon as American, he was born in Lescaide, St. Domingo, now Haiti, on April 26, 1785. The son of a French sea captain, he was taken to France as a young man to study art. He did not see the United States until 1803, when his father sent him to live there near Philadelphia and urged him to enter the business world. Instead, Audubon spent most of his time studying and drawing birds. In 1808, he married Lucy Bakewell, who encouraged him in his bird studies. After a disastrous fling at storekeeping and other business ventures in and around Louisville, Kentucky, Audubon found himself sailing down the Mississippi River towards New Orleans. On the way, he began to paint the birds he saw about them, painstakingly depicting every color of every beak, leaf, and even tree lamp making all as true to life as possible. It was these lifelike paintings of birds in the natural surroundings that would eventually bring him fame and fortune. After some time in Louisiana, where he supported his family as a tutor and teacher, Audubon convinced the true idea for his collection of paintings of American birds, but to his surprise and disappointment, no American publisher was interested, so he took the idea to England and Scotland, where his genius was instantly recognized by scientists and art critics. As a result, his first volume of paintings was published in 1827 under the title The Birds of America. For the next 12 years, Audubon worked on this great publishing venture, which eventually composed more than 400 life-size colored navigations. Returning to the United States in 1839, Audubon lived in New York City and drew himself into a preparation of a small edition of the Birds of America and other important bird studies. He died on January 27, 1851. Today, Audubon's name is famous around the world. The National Audubon Society, founded in the honor in 1905, is the oldest and largest national convention organization in North America. It was a reason ball for the treaty between England, Canada, and the United States to protect the flight patterns and nesting places of minority birds. Its con collect controlled bird sanctuaries are located all over the world, each one a living tribute to this dedicated scientist. I mean to a dedicated scientist. 
Audubon developed his own methods for drawing birds. First, he killed them using a fine shot. Yes, you read that right and heard it. That he killed them first before painting. He ain't no bird watcher. But hey, it helps him paint, I guess. And they didn't really have cameras, although they wouldn't really have any colors either. He then uses wires to prop them into a natural position, unlike the common method of many ornithologists who prepared and stuffed the specimens into a rigged pose. When working on a major specimen like an eagle, he would spend it up to 4 to 15 hours a day preparing, studying, and drawing it. His paintings of birds are set true to life in their natural habitat. He often portrayed them as if caught in motion, especially feeding or hunting. This was in stark contrast to the stiff representation of birds by his other contemporaries, such as Alexander Wilson. Audubon based his paintings on his extensive field observations. He worked at primary with watercolor early on. He added color chalk or pastel to add softness to the feathers, especially those of owls and herons. He employed multiple layers of watercolor and sometimes used the wash. All species were drawn life styles which accounts for the colored poses of the larger birds as Audubon strove to fit them within the page size. Smaller species were usually placed on branches with ber berries, fruits, and flowers. He used several birds in a drawing to present all views of anatomy and wings. Larger birds were often placed in their group habitat, or perching on stumps. At times, as with woodpeckers, he compiled several species on one page to offer construction features. He frequently depicted the bird's nest and eggs, and occasionally natural predators. Such as snakes, he usually illustrated male and female variations, and sometimes juveniles, in later drawings, Audubon used assistance to render the habitat for him. In addition to faithful rendering of anatomy, Audubon also employed carefully constructed composition, drama, and slightly exaggerated poses to achieve artistic as well as scientific effects. And that's my history info for John James Audubon. I hope you liked it, and I'll see you next time in my other Story of America cards.